acid anhydrides, which we'll often just call anhydrides for short, tend to be some of the trickiest carboxylic acid derivatives in my experience because the two carbonyl groups built into these reagents tend to throw people off. And I remember being a student in sophomore organic many years ago and being thrown off by these carboxylic acid derivatives. In this video, I hope to show you that acid anhydrides are really just one more example of carboxylic acid derivatives. And they're really a, a highly convenient carboxylic acid derivative in that they react with many, many different nucleophiles, but they're not as susceptible to hydrolysis and breakdown as acid chlorides, and so they're easier to handle. So acid anhydrides are a lot like acyl chlorides, but not quite as reactive. Because they're sort of further down the reactivity ladder, they're more stable toward nucleophiles than acyl chlorides, they can be made from acyl chlorides by treating an acyl chloride with a carboxylate salt or uh, carboxylic acid and base, and the result is an ace acid anhydride or just an anhydride. Now, let me talk a little bit about the structure of the anhydride group. We have a central oxygen flanked by two carbonyl groups. This is an anhydride. So the two carbonyls are both directly linked to this central oxygen. And typically they're symmetric, so the same carbon group or hydrogen will be present on the other side of that shared oxygen between the two carbonyls. This is what we mean by symmetric. It's actually convenient to think about the anhydride asymmetrically, though, in that one of those carbonyls can be thought of as electrophilic, and the central oxygen and the other carbonyl group can be thought of as a leaving group, specifically a carboxylate leaving group. Because negative charge at this O would be resonance stabilized, right? We can think of that O in the middle, quote unquote, and the other carbonyl group as sharing negative charge in a would-be leaving group. So it's actually helpful to just pick one of the two carbonyl groups and in a symmetric anhydride, it doesn't matter which one you pick, and think of that carbonyl group as electrophilic and the rest of the molecule as a potential leaving group, highlighted here in orange. Like acyl chlorides, acid anhydrides undergo nucleophilic substitution with a wide variety of nucleophiles. Pretty much any nucleophile except chloride, this reaction is thermodynamically favorable. It's not favorable in the case of chloride because the carboxylate anion is actually less stable than Cl-. And so if we hit an anhydride with, for example, sodium chloride, absolutely nothing would happen. They are susceptible to hydrolysis. So water with that nucleophilic oxygen can displace the carboxylate and the resulting structure is a carboxylic acid after neutralization. Alcohol nucleophiles can be used in conjunction with the acid anhydride and the result in this case is an ester. So that carboxylate departs as a leaving group and the nucleophilic oxygen forms a bond to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. And here again, it doesn't really matter which carbonyl carbon you think of as electrophilic, but pick one and think of the other carbonyl group and this, that central oxygen as part of a carboxylate leaving group to, uh, to understand this reaction. One thing I've done here, which you will see, is just switch the positions of the electrophile and nucleophile on the reaction scheme. Here this reaction kind of looks more like, quote unquote, an acylation of a nucleophile, installing an acyl group on the nucleophilic oxygen, but it's just nucleophilic acyl substitution, right? And the key here is identify the nucleophile, identify the electrophile, and identify the leaving group. You can do those three things, you can work your way through any nucleophilic substitution reaction. And acyl substitution is no exception. In the last case, we've got an amine nucleophile, primary or secondary. We need to have an H on there so that it can be um, lost as a proton to get to a neutral anode product. Reaction of that with an acid anhydride leads to an amide. So the carboxylate leaving group is displaced by this pretty good nitrogen nucleophile, and the result is an amide here. So notice that starting from the anhydride, we can get to carboxylic acids via hydrolysis process, esters, and amides through favorable nucleophilic acyl substitutions. The reductive reactions of acid anhydrides very much parallel the reduction reactions of acyl chlorides that we saw in the previous video. They are reduced all the way to primary alcohols by lithium aluminum hydride via an aldehyde intermediate through a mechanism that is perfectly analogous to the mechanism of reduction of acyl chlorides. And if we treat with a Grignard reagent, 
two equivalents of the Grignard reagent add to an acid anhydride to give a tertiary alcohol product via a ketone intermediate. So the only difference between these reactions and the acyl chloride reactions we've already seen is that there is a carboxylate leaving group involved in both of these. Otherwise, they're exactly the same conceptually as the reductions of acyl chlorides. Like acyl chlorides, they react with lithium organocuprates to give ketones. So these milder organometallic reagents don't add two equivalents of R2 minus, but only one equivalent. And so we stop at the ketone stage after substitution of R2 minus for the carboxylate group, if you like. Partial reduction of anhydrides to aldehydes also works using lithium triacetoxy uh, aluminum hydride, and this gives the aldehyde from the starting uh, anhydride, where again, essentially H minus displaces a carboxylate leaving group. So anhydrides get a little bit tricky when they're not symmetric, when these two R groups are not the same. You may or may not see that in your courses. Um, sometimes I cover it, sometimes I don't. Generally, which carbonyl reacts has to do with steric and electronic effects. That can get a little tricky, a little complicated to deal with. So we probably won't wade into that, certainly not in videos, but may touch on it in class.